Hey Carvados, previously we looked at Team Dragon's Vanity as a whole and looked at what the set has to offer for all clans supported in that specific set. And starting today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper in each and every individual clan and see what the support provides to that specific clan and how good each and every individual card actually is for their respective strategy. And today we're gonna start off with everyone's favorite United Sanctuary clan, Shadow Paladin. And Shadow Paladin got some awesome new additions with the brand new Claret Sword Dragon and his support wave and also nice little extra cards for budget players as well as an upgrade to Mordred Phantom. So there's a lot to discuss so let's dive right into the new cards and see what they have to offer for Shadow Paladin. And we start of course with the new reprints that this set has to offer. We of course have all triggers that are reprinted once again so another heal, two crits and a draw. All of them are going to get one star as they're just generic reprints. Also another reprint in this set is the drop draw grade one drop PG that is in every clan's second support wave. And as soon as this is the third or fourth support wave for Shadow Paladin, it is of course a generic reprint so only one star. Then we dive into the new cards and we're gonna go into the pseudo new cards as we have yet again a new starter and for them that is Promising Knight David. And I'm gonna go right ahead and give this one as well as a one star as it's just a palette swap of the generic starters that we've seen every every single time. Then follow up from the starters we're going to get two new vanilla cards and we start up with this grade one that is David Bao. And this is the intercepting grade one and overall it's a cute interesting type of vanilla as it allows you to play more aggressively with your grade one it does synergize in some capacity with claret sword dragon but on an overall scale it's not really that amazing and it isn't really that widely used so i'm gonna go ahead and give it only one star as we don't really expect to see it as much maybe it's a fun tech card for budget players but that's about it then from the grade 1 vanilla card we go into the new grade 2 vanilla card and that is Jammer Intruder. And this is a very unique grade 2 vanilla as it's a brand new type of vanilla as this is the 15k shield 7k grade 2. And this is basically a grade 2 version of the 15k shield grade 1 vanilla that we have seen all the way back in the Unite Q4 set with the Oracle Think Tank vanilla and that we've seen for a lot of Protect decks. This is an interesting new uh, type of vanilla. I don't think it's gonna be that great. I'm only gonna give it two stars as there might be some into it as the difference between this type of vanilla with the grade two instead of the grade one is that there's actually a big increase in shield value as you go from a 5k shield to a 15k shield instead of the 10k shield to a 50k shield with a grade one. The only trade-off is, is that the base power is significant less. So we have to wait and see if this is actually gonna see play. I don't expect that it happens, but maybe somebody thinks, hey, this is nice to have some extra shield value in the list. Now with the basic cards out of the way, let's take a look at the new VR before we're going to get into the unique cards so we have a better understanding of how potent their potential skills could be with the new VR. And the new VR for Shadow Paladin in this set is none other than Claret Sword Dragon. For your premium players out there, keep note that this name is a little bit different than the original one as that was Supremacy Dragon, Claret Sword Dragon. So you could play both, don't see why, but that's just a tidbit that I wanted to give to you guys. And this Claret Sword Dragon's abilities are as followings. Auto and Vanguard Circle, when placed, look at the free cards from the top of your deck, Put any number of grade 1 cards from among them into your drop zone and shuffle your deck. This unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn for each card put into your drop zone. And the second ability is Auto and Vanguard Circle once per turn. At the end of the battle that it attacked, cast Counter plus 1 and bind 7 grade 1s from the drop zone. Stand this unit and it gets drives minus 1 until the end of turn. So the new Claret Sword Dragon build wants to fill the drop zone with as many great ones as possible so you can eventually bind seven of them to restand your Claret Sword Dragon. The offset to the restand ability is, is that it doesn't minus you unlike most uh, restand abilities, but in actuality and in effect, it pluses. So that's a nice addition as it helps you with some defense capabilities. The only downside is, is of course, it's slow, it's not consistent, it needs a lot of setup, so you need to build your deck accordingly. So there is some issues with that aspect. The upside is to his first ability is that 
It doesn't mill the entire top three cards, so you only mill the great ones that you want to mill, so you have some bit of control, and that means you don't necessarily go deck out pretty fast, with all the other cards you're going to search out a lot of cards to try to mill more cards from your deck to fill your drop zone with great ones. So at least you have some control of how fast you go through your deck. And the extra 10k power for each card is really nice, as it helps you to have a scary restander once you activate it, as... It could potentially get plus 30k, and with the Force 1 on top of it, that means plus 40k, so that could be a very powerful restander. You can then also decide to go for Force 2 if you manage to get a lot of power. Sadly, the acquiring of the gift is before you activate on Blaze Effect, so you don't really know how many great ones you're going to mill. But before we can analyze how strong and potent this new strategy is, Let's take a look at the supporting cards and then we come back to Clarator Dragon to give its final review. So with Clarator Dragon out of the way, let's jump right into the overall generic cards as we start off with this great one, Knight of Old Grudges, Mephalo. And Mephalo's ability is auto rearguard circle, once per turn, when your rearguard is retired by a card's ability, you may have this unit get power plus 10k until the end of turn. Overall, I think this is a 2 star card, it does have a 7k body, so that's already a negative downside, and it is dependent on other cards' abilities to activate its skill, as it states that it needs to be retired through an ability, so you cannot call something on top of each other to also activate it. So it costs you more resources or other cards to actively get the plus 10k power. But it could be a nice addition for something like Gus Blaster or Phantom Blaster or just a generic retire strategy focus play style that we discussed with a budget option with the previous set. So there is some interaction with this card that makes it somewhat playable and not just outright useless as a 10k increase for free in that regard is a nice addition. Sadly it's only once per turn as if it was not a once per turn this card would actually be amazing with something like Gas Blaster that can then swing in for really high but maybe that would be a little bit too much but for now it's only two star card. And for one great one we go to another as here we have Knight of Machinations Abakdo and its ability is auto invigorate the rearguard circle when it attacks or boost cost retire one of your grade one rear guards in another column and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of the battle. Overall, this is all, yet again, I think, a two-star card. It allows you to fill the drop zone with more great ones. It does synergize, therefore, with Claire's Sword Dragon. Also, it synergizes with Gust Blaster to that extent, as it retires more cards, so it gives your Gust Blasters more crits. But it's awkward in the fact that it specifically needs to retire a grade 1, so you don't really have a control over what type of units you can retire, and it also needs to be in another column. So, either this is behind your Vanguard, if it's Gus Blaster, for example, then you don't really mind as it's in your other columns, but if it's in one of your left or right columns, it means you don't really have much of control, and it also means that you probably are forced to attack with this column as the last attack, otherwise you're probably gonna retire a booster that still can boost, so... It's not the greatest of cards, and there are probably are better, but it does have some synergies with other boss units, so therefore I'm granting it a two-star rating. And now we get to another generic card, and this time it's a grade two, which is Witch of Iron Change Ness. And her ability is auto on rearguard circle. When placed, cause soulless one and retire a grade one rearguard. Your opponent chooses one of his or her rearguards, retires it, and he or she cannot intercept until the end of turn. So basically, on plays, you trade one for one. The only downside is you specifically need to retire with one, and your opponent can choose whatever it is. they can retire, and you block their interceptors, which, which is it's mediocre. It doesn't really do all that much. It's also behind an on plays effect, and it's a great two. And it also costs you a Soul Blast, so you're trading off a lot for almost nothing. So for that I'm only going to give it one star, as this is a pretty bad card that won't be used in any type of actual competitive strategy. Now we get to another grade 2 common card, and this is actually one that I really like. And as we, here we have Knight of Sudden Rage, Magmorda. And Magmorda's abilities are Cotillus of Rigor Circle. When it would attack... This unit cannot attack unless you retire one of your other rearguards. This skill might sound bad, but in actuality it does synergize with different kinds of strategies, as of course it allows you to retire your grade ones for Clarets or Dragon, but it also is a nice booster for something like Gus Blaster, as it allows you to stack up more crits, as you can stack off other units, and it doesn't really minus you if you combine it with Nemain, as Nemain itself allows you to get free pluses out of nowhere, but those pluses aren't really the best of cards themselves, so if you can sacrifice them for other abilities, 
that is actually what you want to do. So that's what you can achieve with this card. But it doesn't stop there, because if that was the only ability, it wasn't that great. His other ability is Continuous of Rigor Circle. If your drop zone has three or more grade one cards, this unit gets power plus 15k. So it's a pretty big beat stick, as it is a 25k attacker on its own for a retire, but that in itself can fuel other effects. So it has some synergies with other cards out there. The only downside is that it is good in a mid turn with Claret Sword Dragon, but once Claret Sword Dragon binds seven grade one, there is a highly likely chance that you don't have another free in a drop zone meaning this ability won't be live. So there are some ups, there are some downs. So for that, I'm gonna give it three stars as it allows to be played in more different strategies and there is more utility options available to this card as this also activates certain cards that that needs you to retire your own rear guards to activate their abilities like the great one that we already discussed. So there is more to this card than meets the eye. Then another very interesting card that I already highlighted in the set breakdown, that is this great free Knight of Insight Beth Hayden. And its ability is act on Vector to Rearguard Circle once per turn, cost counter plus one and retire two other rear guards. Call a card with the same grade as or less than the sum of grade of the retired cards for this cost from a drop zone to the rearguard circle. And that unit and this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. So this is basically a polymerization on legs that grow limbs as you smash in two rearguards to create something better out of them. And that's actually pretty good in a clan that doesn't really have a lot of recursion but has a lot of unplace effects as you can reuse something like Best of Dark or you can use something like Charon that can chain off of this. You can also combine this with Nullity Revenger Masquerade to have another surge going on. And if we get more and more of these powerful unplace effects, this card will only get better. And the fact that this unit and that unit get another 10k means you get a lot of value out of the single counterplace. As yes, you are second two of your own units, but you're going to get one back. So it's a minus, but that minus allows you to potentially get a better unit out onto the board or get more power onto the board and extra effects. So there's a lot more to this card than actually the skill states. So for that, I think it's a solid free star card, even though it's a great free without a marker as the implications of this effect and the potential of this card is pretty damn high. Now that we discussed the generic cards, let's dive into the new additions to the Mordor Venta build. And we start off with this great one support card for Blast the Dark as that is Inflexible Arrow Murora and her ability is auto rigor circle when you're a blaster dark in the same column as this unit stand cast soul plus one stand this unit and this unit gets power plus 15k until the end of turn so this is in my opinion a very solid five star card as it allows you to create very solid rear guard columns with blaster dark and the soul blast is no problem for the build as it uses counter blast and actuality generates soul so cost is a non-issue but the fact that it gains so much power means defensive triggers and guarding against your extra attacks are going to be very tough as the second attack will have an additional 25k power on top of them with the additional 10k that we're going to get of mordred himself so that's a lot of power but that in itself wouldn't guarantee the five star rating the 5 star rating comes from the fact that it's a 5k grade 1. And for anybody that plays Shadow Paladin or are aware of Shadow Paladin knows that 5k power is the magic number. As that means you can search this card out with the main. And a searchable card that synergizes with your main strategy is insanely powerful. So for that it's definitely a 5 star card in my opinion as it's going to be a nice addition to the build and you don't have to run a 4 off this card as you can search it out with the main. Another addition to the Blaster Dark build is Knight of Entrenchment Guilty. And this grade 2 has the following ability. Continues on Rearguard Circle and Guardian Circle. If Blaster Dark is on your Vanguard Circle or Rearguard Circle, this unit gets power plus 10k and shield plus 10k. This is, in my opinion, a two-star card. It's not that over, it's not that amazing, but it gives the deck more options to strategize or customize your own build to your personal playstyle. As this allows you to have a more aggressive early game, as the Mordor Phantom build itself isn't providing a lot of aggression until you are able to restand your Blaster Darks. This allows you to have solid 20k columns in the early game, besides potentially your twin driving Vanguard. Which can be very scary, especially if you then follow up with a more Dead Phantom turn. So that can be actually a good setup. And the fact that it then can potentially be a 15k Interceptor or a 15k Shield from hand. Because once you go into your late turns, 
the only cards you're gonna call are either Mordred Phantom to the Vanguard Circle, Blessed Ark to the Rigged Circle, and your Danger Lunge to the Rigged Circle if you want to finish off. So your other Grid 2s, Grid 1s, uh, aren't really that necessary or aren't going to do as much. So having those units then suddenly have an increase of shield value can be a very good thing. So I think this is a good support card, but won't be a 4 off as it doesn't help you with your generic strategy it's just a overall value engine that allows you to do your plays a little bit better on a consistent basis than outright providing you with the plays. so that's why i think it's a solid two star card for that build and then we end up with the last card for the new more defender build and that is this great free onyx dust dragon and this card is pretty damn nuts as its abilities are auto vanguard to rear circle when placed if Bless the Dark is not on your rearguard circle, cost counter plus one and soul plus one, search your deck for up to one Bless the Dark, call to the rearguard circle and shuffle your deck. This card is exactly what the deck needed, as now Bless the Dark has an actual searcher, as they can just fetch out the card from the deck without relying on Nullity Revenger Masquerade, as that could only get it if it was in the top seven. So this helps the deck's consistency to increase to immense levels. So that's is a really nice addition. And also this card allows you to have a more aggressive play as you can now force out more force markers on an interesting play. As you, if you already have a Blessed Dark onto the field, you can call this thing on top of the Blessed Dark. The Blessed Dark gets retired, you can then activate its ability, search out another Blessed Dark, call to the other side. And if it so happens to be that you have a transient Revenger Masquerade onto the field, you can activate its ability to recall the Blessed Dark from the drop zone back onto the field. And thus, you've created two extra force markers, filtered your deck with one card, and you now can proceed to have two columns that can restat. So there are a lot of interesting plays this card allows you to do, but you don't have to recall the Blessed Dark on top of this unit because of its following ability. As a second ability is continuous a rearguard circle, if a Blessed Dark is on the rearguard circle, this unit gets boost. And what's great about this is, is that it doesn't necessarily need to be in the same column as the Blessed the Dark. So this thing can boost anything as long as you have a Blessed the Dark onto the field. And this, with the Blessed the Dark, makes a nice 23k column. And with the additional force powers and the Mordred Phantom 10k, that can be a very solid attack. But of course, you rather want to boost it with the Grid 1, as that can also restand with the second attack. But overall, this is a very good addition for the Blaster Dark Mortar Defender build, and I'm definitely going to give it 5 stars, as this is a tech card and a support card that the deck actually needed to up its consistency on a deck that's already pretty consistent. Now we get into the new support cards for Clarets for Dragon, but before that, there is one more special card that is generic to the entire clan, but this is going to be an insane card that it's going to change a lot for future card design and how we're going to see new support for clans. As we have this great one, Cherishing Knight, Renwin. And its abilities are continuous effect at the rigor circle. During your turn, if your drop zone has three or more grid one cards, this unit gets power plus 5k. So it becomes a 13k attacker booster if you have a somewhat filled drop zone. Not really that amazing. It's a nice addition, an extra five free power potentially. Does synergize in some regards with Claret Sword, but at the same time also not if it uses its bind mechanic. But this can be splashed in any build because of its main ability, that is its second ability, as that's auto event at the rigor circle. When plays from hand, look at the five cards from the top of your deck, reveal to one great free from among them, and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck. And if you put a card, discard a card from your hand. This is basically a retrain of the original Stride Father, which this also happens to be. But this time, we can search out any great free. And that is pretty damn big, as this means whatever type of strategy you want to play, it's gonna increase the consistency of it because every type of strategy relies on a grade three. This way, you can now justify running less than eight grade threes, and in some regards, maybe six, maybe even four. As now, the only thing that drives you to run more grade threes is just if you want to have access to more markers. Not so necessary consistency, as this card allows you to have the same level of consistency by running less great threes, even though it now looks like you're running more. So this, in my opinion, is definitely a five-star card, as this is gonna be used widely throughout Shadow Paladin, and not only in this set, but probably sets and metas and eras to come, as this is super generic, and this is gonna be insane. So definitely a five-star card, in my opinion. And any card that is somewhat remotely similar to this one would definitely get a five-star card, as it 
has such a future-proof car design that is insane. But now we're going to get in the actual Claret Sword Dragon support as we head into this great one that is blue, Espada Dragon. And its ability is Auto Vanguard the Rigged Circle. When placed, look at the free cards from the top of your deck, revealed to one Claret Sword Dragon or Morian Spear Dragon, that's the great two support card. From among them, put it into your hand, put the rest into the drop zone, and if your drop zone has five or more grade one cards, this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. All right, I'm gonna go right ahead and give this one a four star rating as it allows you to increase the consistency of the Clarence or Dragon build as you can search as the grade two or the grade three. And this can be happening even if you write it as a Vanguard unit, so it can also help you with the right chain consistency, which is pretty damn huge. And if it so happens to be that you call this thing late game and you have five in a drop zone, then you have a nice booster or attacker as it's an 18k unit. And it does sit just with Claret Sword Dragon with a timing as this activates on place. So you can place this thing once you already filled your drop zone, get the power, and then you can activate Claret Sword Dragon auto ability once it's attacked to get a restand and this unit won't lose the power. But the reason why I'm giving it a 4 star and not a 5 star is that this card is very limited in the Claret Sword build as once we strive away from Claire's for Dragon which is very likely once we get more support for Shadow Paladin this card will become pretty useless pretty damn fast so that's why I'm only going to give it four star as its future potential is very limited now we get into the grade two but not more in Spear Dragon as we have this grade two Dark Pride Dragon and its ability is Auto Vector to Rigged Circle when placed this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn and you may put three cards from the top of your deck into the drop zone if a grade one was put, cast, count the best one, and draw a card. So this, in my opinion, is a solid free star card because it's a 15k on place, which is pretty outdated right now. But you can then mill the top three and potentially get a cost, count the best one, draw a card, which is also still pretty fine for a cost of a counter blast. But the extra addition of the mills gives it somewhat of an RNG reliant as if you don't mill a grade one, you don't get the potential draw out of it. And if you mill three triggers, you're not gonna be very happy. But then again, that milling helps it to be a very good support card for Clarence or Dragon as it allows you to fill the drop zone as fast as possible with as much grade ones as possible. So there is some use to this card and therefore I'm going to give it 3 star. Now we're going to take a look at the grade 2 support card for Claritor Dragon. And that is of course Morian Spear Dragon. And its ability is Act on Vanguard the Rigor Circle. Once per turn, cost Soul Blast 1 and discard a card from your hand. Draw a card and this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. If you discard the grade 1 for this cost, it gets plus 10k instead of plus 5k. So this card allows you to potentially have a 15k unit or a 20k unit and it can also be a vanguard unit so that means in the early game you can easily hit over defensive triggers which is pretty damn nice especially for shadow paddling which tend to be on the more slower side of decks but the fact that it costs a soul blast and a discard is pretty damn huge as it allows you to soul blast the grade one and you can discard a grade one as well so that is a nice setup for your other cards that synergize with grade ones and the fact that you get a draw of it means it's a cycle card. So this card is actually pretty damn huge. And therefore I'm going to give it 5 stars. As it allows you to have a very nice solid beater early to mid to late game. It is a cycle card to boot. And it's a nice Claret Sword support card that synergizes with what the clan wants to do. So it's overall a pretty damn good card. But on top of all that, it's generic. It doesn't really matter if you run Claret or Dragon or not. So this card can be used in any type of build that wants to do something. The only downside to this card is in most synergies with Shadow Paladin, it doesn't outright retire cards. So once you are playing a more retire strategy focus or something that synergizes with once cards are getting retired, this might not be as good. But on an overall value wise, this card is pretty damn good. Now, before we go back to Claret Sword Dragon, there's one more card I want to discuss, and that's another great free that is somewhat of a support card, but at the same time also not. And that is Knight of Blind Advance Lugate. And Lugate's abilities are auto and Vanguard to Rigor Circle. When placed, if your opponent's Vanguard is grade free or greater, cause Countless 2, retire any number of your rear guards. Your opponent chooses the same number of hits of your rear guards as retired cards and retires it. So for a countless two, you sack off your field and your opponent sack off their field. This is 
it's fine it's somewhat reminiscent of the Jira strides of Luard but it's not really that amazing especially since it's on place and your opponents need to be a great free but the fact that it also works in rearguard circle is fine but its main effect lies in the second ability and at the same time this is where it's really weird if it's actually synergy with clarator dragon as that effect is act on rearguard circle cost bind three grade one cards from your drop zone and draw a card so this just like Clarot Sword binds your grade one. So that conflicts with each other. So that's why I don't really see this as a support card. But this can be used in any type of Shadow Paladin build just as a solid draw engine. As any Shadow Paladin build, and any build in Vanguard for that matters, runs a significant amount of grade ones. Somewhere in the range of 10 to 14 grade ones is not that strange. So that means you can have some extra free draws. And the fact that it's not a once per turn means you can out of nowhere get two or three extra draws to help you fill the board or to achieve your combo so that's actually pretty damn fine and the funny thing is this does synergize with premium to some extent as you have the more faster stride that turns all your grade zeros into grade ones for the turn and you have the grade twos that counts as grade ones in your drop zone and it's synergized with this card so you can have some insane draw engine going on but at the same time it's not that ideal as that means you're sacrificing your rituals for draws it's probably not the smartest play, but if you play a non-ritual deck, but you play the Morphessa Stride just for draws or free pressure, then this could actually be a interesting synergy just to increase your hand size for some reason. So there are some interesting plays with this card, but overall it's pretty mediocre, pretty like luster, so I'm going to give it two stars. But there are some fun interactions that you can come up with this card but not really that amazing overall now that we're done with everything we can head straight back to clarity dragon and have a better understanding of what this card can do so we know that this card can potentially sack off a couple of great ones from the top deck but it's pretty rng so you're not guaranteed of getting value off that but that power allows you to go for a force two strategy as we've seen you can fill the drop zone with great ones pretty damn easily and we only see the cards in this set. We also have, of course, cards like the main that can search out all the great ones. And then Sword Breakers that allows you to draw more cards. And we have other cards that can synergize with great ones to fill the drop zone quite rapidly. And it's not that unlikely to get the restand off on your first great free turn. And we have seen many playthroughs of people that are doing that. So you can somewhat assume that that's going to be the case. So that's why people likely go with Force 2. And if they're lucky and get some great ones in the top mills then you have a very solid potentially 23 33 or 43 restanding finger unit that has three drive checks in total and both attacks come with two criticals naturally and of course you then have the triggers on top of that and you're running a lot of crits so that sounds really scary and very strong as the new build is going to be very early game aggressive focused but at the same time this card on its own isn't really that great as the power is very rng that means there's a chance you're not milling anything or maybe just one. That means your Vanguard is not swinging for that hard. And if you don't happen to fill your drop zone as quickly as possible, you might not even do anything on your turn. And if you didn't kill in the turn and you don't rewrite, that means your following Claire's Sword won't do anything. As it's an unplace effect to mill and get potentially power. So... There is a problem with that and the fact that you're milling that many cards. And there are some cards that are milling you blindly like Dark Pride Dragon. There is a potential that you accidentally mill your other Claritra Dragons or you're going to put them into the damage zone. So there is a chance you don't actually rewrite. So that's also a problem with the card. And the engine itself is very strong, but Claritra Dragon on its own doesn't really do all that much. And... If we happen to get another boss unit that synergizes with Grid 1's and Drop Zone that is somewhat better and it's not really that hard to think of something that's better than this card, it's going to be replaced. And the statistics on results are speaking for themselves as ever since this card set came out in Japan, we haven't really seen any Clarets or Dragon tops. We have seen more than Phantom topping and especially now in the international side, more than Phantom is topping, but Clarets or Dragon isn't topping. And that's for reasons because... Clarity the Dragon is not a consistent enough build. The engine itself is really strong and it allows the deck to do what it needs to do. But Clarity the Dragon isn't really up to snuff to make it happen. For, so for that reason, I can only give this card a 3 star rating. As in VR wise, it's not the best VR that we got in a long time. And it is a powerful card and it can close games if you high roll. But unlike other high roll VRs that we got in the past. Like the Tachikaze Anger Blader one or Ekravane. 
this card needs a lot more to happen and a lot more things to go right to actively win on the high roll. And I know for a fact that I'm gonna get lynched in the comments for that statement, but just look at the stats. Just look at the results of the last couple of weeks in, in, in the international side, even before this whole outbreak that's canceling everything. You can then, for that reason, go back to months in the past when Japan got this card, and even then, Claret Sword didn't really do that much because the only results that I personally have seen are victories from small local card shops that are played with like a handful of people and those results you cannot really take them seriously you need to look at big events for these type of results and Claret Sword isn't doing all that great but that's basically all the cards in this set Shadow Paladin did get some nice addition the Claret Sword build even though Claret Dragon is somewhat of a subpar VR himself the build around him is insane and very potent as the killing blow of this build is definitely in cards like Blue Espada Dragon and Morian Spear Dragon as those cards are insanely powerful and can reach really high numbers very early on so there's a more aggression on the early side but besides that we got of course generic support for the more retired strategies for cards like Phantom Blaster Dragon or Gus Blaster Dragon or just some budget alternative and I really like the polymerization on legs that can grow limb scars as that allows the clan to be a more inventive or intuitive with potentially future cards or other strategies that can then suddenly pop up as they're going to strive a little bit away from the generic I call smack, retire and do stuff as they're now more incentive to strategize and deck build new type of concoction and of course we round everything up with the Mordred Phantom support so just it's insanely strong and it makes an already powerful and consistent deck all the more powerful and all the more consistent but that rounds up this set review for Shadow Paladin for Team Dragon Vanity let me know in the comments down below what your guys opinions are on these new cards for Shadow Paladin there are a lot of interesting new additions to the clan and also of course this new strategy that is somewhat reminiscent of the ritual type playstyle with blue art but at the same time not exactly just like how the original claire sword dragon had a similar playstyle with blue art that they're focused on grade ones but at the same time not exactly so let me know in the comments down below all your thoughts and opinions and i'll see you guys in the next set review when we dive into the cards for vanquisher so as always this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over patreon.com slash vanguard insider you guys are amazing if you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timely, and I'll see you guys in the next one!